Hey everybody, welcome to this Adobe Illustrator tutorial. I'm Nathaniel Dodson from Tutvid.com and today we're going to take a look at creating a, this happy little fire illustration because I don't know about you, but when I think about fire, I think about happiness. I'm aware that makes me sound like a pyrotechnic. Uh, pyro, no, not a pyrotechnic, a pyromaniac would be the correct term. Um, but it's just a nice little happy fire, you know, he looks kind of cool. It's inspired by the artist MBE is their username over on uh, Dribble, And I've got a link down in the bio where you can check it out. If you do enjoy this video tutorial, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any Adobe Illustrator tutorials in the future. Let's jump into Illustrator now and check this thing out. Okay, here we are in Adobe Illustrator, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new document, and this new document is going to be, as you can see here, 2560 by 1440, and I'm going to go with the CMYK color mode. Don't worry about the warning triangle there. We're going to stick with CMYK, and with this new document, what I'm going to do is click on my rectangle tool, click a single time to create a background. I'm going to make it the size of my document, 2560 by 1440. I'm going to select the stroke here in my uh, toolbar, or toolbox, I should say, and set it to none, and the fill, I'm going to use my color panel up here, which is set to CMYK. And I'm going to fill this with the color uh, Cyan 100. We're going to go Magenta 80. We're going to keep uh, yellow at zero. And we're going to jump the blacks to 80 as well. So just this very sort of rich, bluish, purplish color. And I'm going to align this to my artboard using my align panel right here. And I've got it set to align to artboard. I'm going to align horizontally, vertically. Whoop, there we go. Something like that. That looks good. I'm going to use a little flyout menu here in my layers panel as well and go panel options. And I'm going to make my thumbnails quite a bit larger so you can see them a bit easier. I'm going to name this layer BG for background. I'm going to lock it up and we will create a new layer to begin creating our actual flames artwork. All right, so this begins with the ellipse tool. We're going to click a single time and I'm going to create an ellipse 350 by 350. I'm sorry if I'm kind of speeding through it. Um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want it to take two hours to create this. Let's get through this nice and quickly. You can always pause and slow down the YouTube video and that way we can all kind of follow along at our own good pace. I am going to, I'm just going to fill this with white just so we can see it. We're going to change the color in a little bit. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to create a rectangle which is 350 wide by, let's go with like 700 tall we're gonna go with something that's that's pretty pretty tall here and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna select my little circle here I'm gonna align it to the center of my artboard and I'm gonna do the same with my rectangle so align that sucker to the center just like that I'm also gonna move it so it's beneath the circle that I just created so if I just make this slightly pink you can see here in the layers panel it's above our ellipse if I drag it below well obviously now it is below I'm once again gonna fill this with white but I'm just hitting that little white swatch up in my color panel while the shape is selected and by the way the fill is what is selected not the stroke if I had the stroke selected it would just give it a white stroke so I've got the fill selected and I can adjust the fill I'm gonna select both these shapes by dragging a selection over them I'm gonna open my pathfinder panel here and I'm gonna choose this option here the divide function divide and it's gonna drop everything into a group I want to ungroup this so I'm gonna go object ungroup and then I'm gonna select this little bit here on the bottom and just get rid of it so we have this shape and it's two shapes really but they combine to make this one shape in fact to really make sure that they're combined we're going to use our pathfinder once more and choose the merge option there we go now it is actually factually one shape now we want to begin cutting this out. Remember, we made this 350 pixels wide, so we want to divide that by something. Now I know 35 divided by 7 is 5, so 350 divided by 70 would be 5, but I actually want more sort of bits sticking up. So I'm going to divide it by 50, which is going to give me 7. And I am, I'm aware, this is not a math channel, this is a, this is a graphic design channel, so chill out with the math. Here, just follow along. We're going to go with the width of 50 and a height of 500 and a corner radius just to blow it, blow it to kingdom come. A corner radius of 100 is going to be perfect for us. So there we go, we've got that, that looks great. I want to go ahead and make sure under view my smart guides are turned on. This is really going to help us here with what we're about to do. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to just slightly color this gray so we can see what's going on. I'm going to drag this over just until it kind of snaps into place. I want it to snap to the edge of my shape. I'm going to hold down alter option and while holding down shift as well just to keep dragging copies of this straight over to the right just like this. And once I have these lined up, I'm going to just alter option, drag an extra copy out here. We're going to use that in a little bit. So now what I want to do is select sort of rounded rectangles 2, 4, and 6. So I'm going to begin with 2, and I'm just going to nudge it downward to right about there maybe. Um, this one I'm going to leave right where it is, and then this, uh, this one I'm maybe going to nudge upward a little bit like that. And next, what I'm going to begin doing is selecting one of these shapes at a time. I'm going to start with shape number two here that I push down, and hold down shift and select the underlying shape. And then using the Pathfinder panel, I'm going to choose minus front, and that's going to just cut a hole right in that shape for us. That's great. 
Then I'm going to do the same thing here with the second rounded rectangle, or the fourth, I'm sorry, I should say, fourth in. Grab both of those shapes, use minus front, there we go. And then I'll do the same thing here with the sixth one. I'm going to nudge this up just a little bit more, I think, something maybe kind of like that. Select both those shapes, minus front. So we're beginning to kind of build out the shape. We still need to do a little bit more for it, but we're getting there. Next, what I'm going to do is select the remaining rounded rectangles. I'm going to fill them all with white so they're all the same shape. You can see, there we go, we've got that. Then I'm going to select all of the shapes, so just these, not the extra rounded rectangle over there but I'm going to select all of these and I want to merge them together using the Pathfinder but the problem is when I do this if I just hit merge and then I select this with like my direct selection tool you can see here I've got all these extra anchor points here and those anchor points are there because that's where the edge of the the old shape was so those anchor points kind of stay little trick here on the Pathfinder panel we can go to Pathfinder options and just check on remove redundant points remove unnecessary extra additional points I'm gonna hit OK I'm gonna merge this once more and now you can see we don't have any of those extra points and what that means is when I say grab all of these anchor points here by the way I'm using the direct selection tool that's the white arrow I'm drawing a selection over the top of this rounded rectangle holding down shift and nudging down with my uh, down arrow key something like that to move that uh, little finger of the flame down and then nudging this one down a little bit as well. When I do that, I'm not going to bump into those points, which will then drag these like streaky looking white lines up my illustration. So it'll really just help alleviate that issue. I'm going to nudge this one down here, something like that. And then we'll grab this one here on the edge and we'll nudge this one all the way down. I'll make this one kind of low or maybe not, not, maybe not crazy low, but lower than the rest, something like that. So now we have the base shape of our flames hanging out for us perfectly in the middle of our document, just like so. I'm going to grab my regular selection tool. I'm going to grab our extra piece, and I'm going to duplicate this by alter option, dragging out a copy of it. And again, smart guides are going to allow me to just kind of align it perfectly with the, the leftmost edge of our flame. I'm going to nudge upward, 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 kind of, I guess, kind of like maybe right about there. And then I'm going to grab my direct selection tool once more, select the top bit of this, and I'm going to nudge this down, and I'm going to just make this, I don't know, you just kind of go with something that looks good to you. I'll probably go with something that's about that sized. And I'll nudge it a little bit closer to the actual body of the flame, and I'm going to make sure I fill it with white so it matches what we've got going on. Ooh, that's a little bit too close. Let me move it away. Something like that I think will work. Ah, you know what? I might even want to stretch it out, make it just a little bit taller. Something kind of like so. I think looking at this, I want to stretch out the top piece of the, the flame right there. Just make that one a little bit taller and make this one a little shorter. Something, eh. Maybe something like that. That I think looks kind of cool. Now what I want to do is create sort of a second layer of flames. So I'm going to alter option, drag out another copy of my rounded rectangle here. And this one I'm going to drag into about right there. So I basically I'm, I'm aligning the round between the top of this little pill shape and the top of this bit of flame. I'm going to alter option, click another copy. And this one I'm going to have shooting way up in the middle, something kind of like that. You know what, I'm going to select this little pill shape. I'm going to bump it up a little bit more. That way I can bump this shape up a little bit more and just give that a little bit more uh, just a little bit more evenness if you will and then I'm going to duplicate an additional copy of this and snap it into place right down over here if it's not snapping into place just try dragging it in again something like that I think that looks cool and now I'm going to drag one more copy and I'm just going to I don't need to duplicate anymore so I'm just going to use this I'm going to drag this and place it somewhere right about there so this one's going to be shooting way up and I want to move this behind so I'm going to make this a little bit darker here you can see oh it's actually already behind so there we go I, I just wanted to make sure it was definitely behind this rounded rectangle shape there and it is so that's great so what I want to do now is trim all these shapes so that they're like these two for instance aren't sticking out beneath our flame shape so I'm going to grab this gray shape here and I'm going to shift click the main fire shape and I'm going to choose the divide option I'm going to ungroup Commander Control G, and I'm just going to select the pieces that I don't want. I don't need that. And then, well, actually, I do need that because I need to be part of my flames. I'm going to fill it with white, and I'm going to select those three pieces by shift clicking them and just merge them all back together. And now I just have this nice gray pill that's perfectly set right there in the crotch of the fire, if you will. I'm going to grab this shape. I'm going to shift click the main body of the flames. Once again, I'm going to divide this. Command or Control Shift G to ungroup delete this little bottom piece sticking out and shift click all three remaining pieces of the flames and merge them together and you can see now we're kind of cleaning this up we got to add color and some opacity stuff to really give this some life but we've built out the essence of the base of our shape 
Let's create a couple little like crackly sparkles that are jumping off of our fire. Use your rounded rectangle tool once more. Click a single time. And I'm going to go with a rounded rectangle that is 50 by 15. Again, just with a massive corner radius, that's fine. It's going to give us this little like plus icon like that. I can zoom in on it a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to duplicate this plus icon, command or control C, and then command or control F to paste in place. Hold down shift and rotate it around to create this little plus. Drag a selection over both and just merge them together. So now we have this nice little plus icon. I can actually size it down a little bit smaller maybe. Make something that's a little bit more manageable. And if the anchor point handles are annoying, you can go view and choose to hide the bounding box just for while we're working on these. That way we can just quickly alter option, drag out copies of this plus. You can see this. We can just drag these out. And these are it could kind of be like, you know, stuff that's popping off of the flame. Again, it doesn't look a huge amount like a flame because we haven't added color yet, but we're getting there. I think I want to drag a fourth one of these out over here. I just want to kind of mix them up. Maybe I'll drag a fifth one out over here. So I'll do something like that. I think that kind of looks good, like that. And now I'm going to begin resizing them. So I'm going to select one, and I'm going to go Object Transform Scale. And I'm going to say, yeah, we'll go uniform. We'll give this like a 50% scale. Let's see what that looks like. That's pretty good. I'll select this here and just hit Command or Control D. It's going to downscale this, but it's going to downscale it based upon the other one. Um, so I'm going to just, you know, just drag it back into place. And then out here, I'll probably hit Command or Control D twice to make one that's really tiny. And I don't know if you saw what just happened there. It just moved down because I actually moved my shape. So we're going to go Object Transform. We're going to once again choose Scale. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I'll probably scale it even smaller. There we go. Something like that. So it's really tiny. And we'll do the same thing over here. Command or Control D. And I'm going to fall for that trap again and drag that over. I'm going to go with this guy out here. We're going to go Object Transform Scale. Down 50%. That's great. And then over here, hit Command or Control D as well. Drag this one in a little bit. And then I think this one I'm going to make really tiny as well. So once more Object uh, Transform Scale. And I'm going to scale this like 75% of where it is. So we just have a fairly small little plus out there. The idea being that as embers get further away from the fire, well, they get a little bit smaller, right? And what I think I'll do to just fill this out a little bit more, I'm going to grab my Ellipse tool. And I'll just throw a couple little like 10 by 10 ellipses. Uh, maybe maybe a 15 by 15 in over here, something like that. I'll go with like a 6 by 6 over here and something like a, yeah, another 6 by 6 there. And then up here, I'll go with like a 9 by 9, something like that. So just a few additional ellipses just to build out what we've got going on here. And then you can come in and just tweak and adjust and make everything, just make everything as perfect as you want it to be. All right, so now we're going to begin adding some color since we've got our basic shape. I'm actually going to grab this whole thing and just shift it downward a little bit so it's a little bit more centered in our document, something like that. And we're going to begin creating some swatches. So what I'm going to do is I am going to set my color panel here to the CMYK mode. And maybe, maybe we won't actually create them here in CMYK. I think what I'm going to do is just use the swatches panel. So I'm going to hit the new swatch button here. And it's going to say, look, we're creating a new swatch. What do you want me to be? Number one, I want you to be a global color so I can quickly and easily change you later. But the first swatch, I want cyan 0, I want magenta at 15, I want yellow at 100. I want this to be a very bright yellow color. I'm going to hit OK, and there's my color right there, that yellowish color. I want to create another new swatch here. I want this to be cyan 0. Again, we're going with global color. Cyan 0, this one's going to be magenta 100, yellow 35, and again, black at 0. So it's a very hot pink color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two colors to create a gradient that's going to affect my the base sort of flame teardrop shape here uh, that we have that we first created. So I'm going to open up my gradient panel. I'm just going to click once to fill it with a gradient. And I'm going to drag the yellow gradient over here onto the white point. And I'm going to drag the pink gradient over here and drop it on the black point. I'm going to set the pink gradient's location somewhere around, I don't know, 75 or so percent. And I'm going to set the angle of this whole thing to 90 degrees. You can see here, we're starting to get a little bit of that flamey vibe. Let's create some more colors here. I'm going to create a new swatch and see what's happening here is it knows I've got a gradient swatch. I don't want to create a gradient swatch here. We're going to go back to just a solid color. I'm going to click create a new color here. And we're going to, again, work with a global color. I am going to set this to cyan 85. I'm going to go with 100 in the magenta department, 25 in the yellow department, and 40 for our black. So this is just this very dark bluish purplish color. I'm going to hit OK. There it is up there. I'm going to go ahead and create another new swatch. This one's going to be cyan 35. It's going to be magenta 100, yellow 45, and only about 10 in the black department. So this is going to be like a, a very heavy magenta, if I had to describe it. Now, this these two colors are going to make up a gradient that are going to fill in sort of the flames licking up from the back. Before I do that, though, I want to select this pill shape here that we have floating up. Hit the eyedropper tool. Where is it? Right there. And just sample the gradient that we placed in the teardrop shape. Make sure we set that to about 90 degrees. And just fill that in with the same gradient that we had. All right. So I'm going to select one of these just middle shapes, fill it with the gradient, and we're going to immediately adjust the gradient. We're going to go with our dark blue. 
kind of dark blue purple color I'm going to fill that into the yellow and then the sort of pinkish color is going to replace the other color stop and I'm going to set this to an angle of 90 degrees as well and there we go we have that now what I can do is select the other shapes hit the letter I sample off of that uh, single shape I can set the gradient to 90 degrees and they all are going to have that same exact gradient and at this point, we can select any of these. We could you know, change the color handles a little bit if we feel the need. We could boost one of these up. Just you know, add a little bit more sort of shadow, if you will. Not that there's much shadow in fire, but you can go ahead and just tweak and adjust these things to you know make sure you're showing the level of purple and pink and everything that you want. Maybe I'll boost this up to add a little bit more darkness back there. And I think I'm going to select this and drag the pink point all the way up. It looks a little funky the way it is. Something kind of like that is cool. Maybe I'll just have it fade down a little bit heavier. Something like that. It's a little too much, though. Something more like that, I think, is nice. And I think what I'll also do is select this shape here in the back, go to my transparency panel here, and I'll just reduce the opacity of this to, like, 50%, something like that, just to really make sure it looks like it's set off in the back. 50% might not be enough. Let's take it down to 35. I think that'll work for us. And again, we can always come back and adjust this later if we absolutely need to. All right, we're going to now grab the rounded rectangle tool. I'm going to create a new rounded rectangle. This one is going to be 20 uh, pixels wide by, let's go with, like, 55 pixels high. Again, a corner radius of 100 just to destroy it. That's great. Uh, and we're going to fill this with white. So I'm going to hit the little white swatch up here on my color panel. So I'm going to go white for the fill there. Great. And I'm going to, in my transparency panel, set this to the blend mode of soft light. And I'll probably even reduce the opacity to like 65. And then I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm going to drag this over. I'm going to put it over here as if it's a highlight here for part of the flames. Something like that. Maybe I'll just shift it to one side a little bit more. Maybe move it down a little bit. And then I'll alter option, click and drag up while holding down shift. Something like that to, to really select that. I'll use my direct selection tool here. Maybe I want this top shape to be a little bit more like a circle. Something kind of like that. And then use my, my black selection arrow and just nudge that down. Actually, you know what? Let me nudge that upward a little bit. Kind of like that. And then I'll nudge this one up to be kind of up beneath it. And now what I can do, I can just alter option, drag this over. Maybe place it here on this piece of fire. And I'll take the little circle and I'll drag it right up here to be up at the top of this guy. I'll drag another copy right over here to be up there. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to back this out a little bit. And let's add some colors and gradients that we've already been using to these sort of like sparking tinders. So I'm going to grab a bunch of the pluses. Uh, let's grab these in here. Maybe this one here, this one, and then these shapes. And I'm just going to hold down uh, or press the letter I, excuse me, to grab my eyedropper tool and just sample uh, this shape down here. So you can see we've got those nice, those nice colors in there. And then I'm going to select the rest of the shapes. Just like this. I'm just holding down shift while I drag a selection. Hold, hit the letter I to grab the eyedropper and fill these with uh, the, the remaining gradient that we have. So we just have some nice colors mixing and kind of sparking off of our fire. And they all blend in with the color scheme that we already have established here with our little flame. Let's create a little face to put on this fire. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this actually beneath here just so we can build out the face. And then we'll drag it into the middle of the flames wherever it needs to go. I'm going to click a single time and I'm going to create a 20 pixel by 20 pixel ellipse. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Let's just fill it with like that dark purpley blue color that we had. I'm going to duplicate it by going edit, copy, and then edit, paste in front. I'm going to switch to my selection arrow here. I'm going to hold down shift and nudge it to the right. One, two, three, four, five. That's going to nudge it over 50 pixels because we're holding down shift and tapping the right arrow key. All right, now let's create his little smiling mouth. We're going to duplicate the same shape, Commander Control C, Commander Control F to paste in place. I'm going to nudge it to the middle between the eyes. So I'm going to go one, two, one, two, three, four, five, just like that. So I held down Shift and tapped the left arrow key twice, and then let go of Shift and tapped the left arrow key five times. That moved it over 25 pixels. And then I'm going to nudge downward, just shift and hit the down arrow key once. Then I'm going to grab my direct selection arrow, and I'm going to select the top middle point right there and just delete that. Now I'm going to make sure I select this shape with my selection arrow. And I'm just going to swap the fill and the stroke by hitting the little swappy swap arrows there. And then here in the stroke options, I'm going to bump this up to probably maybe something like five. That looks pretty good. And if we want, we can hit the word stroke. We can add some rounded caps to that as well. That might look kind of nice. We might need to push it down just a little bit more if we do that, though. Something kind of like that. And maybe we'll even select this and make it just a little bit smaller. Maybe I want the width not instead of being 20 pixels wide to be 15. So I'm going to nudge this down to about 15, something like that. Just a nice smaller mouth. I think it looks a little I think it looks a little cooler. All right, let's grab all three of these shapes and we're going to group them object object group. And we still need to add a little bit of like blushiness for the cheeks. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool once more. I'm going to just swap my stroke and fill color. So I'm just working with an ellipse that will have a fill. And I'm going to create a 20 pixel by 20 pixel ellipse. 
and you can see it's the same size as the eyes. I don't quite want it to be that big, so instead of making this smaller, I think the eyes and mouth are going to need to be made a little bigger. So I'm going to just use my transform panel here, and I've got a width and height parameter that I can change. And what I'll do is I'll change this so it's 100 pixels wide, and I'm going to unlink width and height, and I think I'm going to set the, the height to like 43. Eh, I don't like that. I'm going to leave it at 50. I think 100 by 50 works just fine. And now these, you can see these little, what would be, you know, spots on his cheeks, or they're a little bit more in the size department where I want them to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this, I'm going to change the, the CMYK fill here. I'm going to just hit this little button right here, the CMYK, click to convert. And I'm going to set this to uh, cyan 0, magenta 100, yellow 100 and black zero. So it gives me kind of this flattish reddish color. And I'm going to center this below the eye, just like that. It can be wherever you want it to be. And I'm just going to nudge it 25 pixels to the left. So holding down shift, tap the left arrow key once, twice, and then let go of shift and one, two, three, four, five with the left arrow key. Alter option, click, drag this over until it's centered beneath the next eye. And then we're going to go 25 pixels in the other direction, just like that. So now he's got a little bit of sort of like blushiness on his cheeks. I'll select these both. Let's just reduce the opacity. Maybe they look a little too heavy. We can have a little bit of the color show through with them. And then I'll select this, select all of that, I should say, and go Objects and choose to group it together. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. And I'm going to drag the face up onto the fire, kind of sort of right there, center it up, maybe drop it down a little bit lower. And you can see we got a nice little, little smiling face on our fire, and he's got his little cheeks and everything. You can select any of the shapes, obviously. If you think the cheeks need a little more color, go in, boost the opacity, boom, you're done. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my ellipse tool, I'm going to click a single time, and we're going to just, uh, we're going to be wrapping this thing up shortly here. We're going to go with a width of 350 and a height of 50. This is going to be sort of the shadow beneath the flame, and I'm just going to position it over here. You can position it as near or as far from the flame as you want it to be. We're going to change the CMYK values to cyan 100, magenta just a mere 70, and yellow 0, and then K will be 90. So that's going to give us our nice darkness. And you can see we just have a clean, sharp shadow beneath our little fire effect. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the completed effect. Let me just, uh, let me, whoa, hello, let me just collapse my swatches panel here so we can get a look at this sucker in its full glory. I guess I could have just tabbed everything away like that, right? There is the final, finished, completed effect, creating a little happy fire illustration in Adobe Illustrator. Yeah, there you have it. That is pretty much it, creating that piece of artwork. Now, if you enjoyed it, number one, subscribe to my channel, of course. But uh, more, more importantly, if you did follow along at the tutorial and you created this, upload it to your Instagram and tag me in it. My Instagram handle is at tutvid. I would love to see what you create, give you a little love over there, drop a comment, drop a like, you know, the normal. If you tag me in something uh, that you create from one of the tutorials. Uh, so I'd love to see it over there. That'd be great. If you are into Discord, you can check out our Discord server, discord.me slash tutvid, where the conversation just continues on and on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, for taking a look at creating shapes and using gradients and the Pathfinder panel to cut stuff out and mix things up and match things up and create this little happy fire graphic design effect in Adobe Illustrator, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.